What's up, everybody? How you doing? Mike Watson in the building, publisher of Short Fuse Media Group, founder of Freestyle Comics, one half of the good, the bad, and the nerdy, and the most enthusiastic person in comics, also known as the Super Mad Brother, and as of lately, digital online teacher, chat TV show host, all types of jazzy stuff. But we are here, and I'm super excited for yet again another episode of Chat and Draw. On Chat and Draw, what I do is I sit down in my studio surrounded by my toys and I reach out to local creators far and wide, not just local, but nationwide, statewide, citywide. We reach out to creators and we said we're going to promote them on the Short Fuse page. I'm going to sit down, take their character, whatever character they want, and I'm going to draw them on my trendy little iPad. And while I draw this character, we're going to have a dialogue a conversation, a bit of back and forth about this creator and their character, where they're going, where they've been, and where are they at right now. Last week's episode, we had Chris Thomas on there. We were promoting Bass Force. We even got the artist on that episode. We had a really, really, really good time. Um, it was a lot of fun. And this week's episode, we have Tony Cottrell in the building, who I'm about to get ready to bring on here. dun 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 Tony, hey, how you doing, Mike? How you doing, bro? Doing fine. Welcome to the show, man. Second episode of Chat and Draw. Glad to be here. First of all, let me say thank you for having me on the show. And uh, last episode was amazing. I learned a lot from Chris's uh, character. Bass Force looks cool, especially when you draw him. You <laughs> might have to do an issue for him. You might have to do an issue for him. <laughs> Bass Force was fun to draw. Uh, Robert Nix and Chris came up with the killer design uh, for that character. It was super fun to draw. Um, and uh, looking forward to drawing your character as we let me see if I can get this character to pop up here so we can get him on the screen with us and then we can dive right into some of this action here. And we're going to share our second screen. There we go. And should be coming up in uh, boom. And we got so who is this? Who do we have on the table with us right now? That particular character is called Tribesman. He is okay. the leader of a group of characters called Africa Force. Basically, in the book that we have going on now called Cosmos, um, a hero called Legend, who's basically for all intents and purposes, um, he's a Superman archetype character who is looking for allies because something's happening and he needs some assistance. So he, he goes and recruits Africa Force to assist him. Mm -hmm. This issue, that threat, reveals itself, and so Africa Force, Legend, and a whole bunch of other people join together to try to stop this. Threat. Okay. So, Rosman is basically, um, how can I describe him? Um, he is the brother of a major character in the universe, and he is going to be playing a bigger role come later issues of Cosmos, uh, but right now this is only like his third introduction, uh, his third uh, appearance in the uh, in the Advent universe. He's appeared twice before uh, Cosmos number two. He appeared in our 10th anniversary book, and this is his third appearance. Okay. But you will be seeing a lot more of this character. All right. So tell me about the process of making this character. How did he come about? Like... Where you vacuum him well, one day and he just popped up in your head, or was this a very no, thought process? Actually, um, most of the characters in the Advent Universe, I've been creating comics in my mind since I was six years old. Um, okay. And I have in a in a little Bible that I still have. I have over three thousand characters in that little Bible that I've created over the years. Tribesman was one of the earliest creations. I think I created him like in seventh grade. Uh, yeah, it was around seventh grade. Um, so I always had Africa Force characters envisioned in my head, and this was the perfect story to tell their origins and bring them about. Um, this Cosmos story reaches pretty much every part of our Advent universe, where it brings in cosmic characters, uh, street level characters, you name it, and it's all in one big story. So it was the perfect time for me to introduce them, and um, I put them together with a group of other characters uh, such as Golden Pharaoh, uh, Negus, uh, Nimrod the Hunter, 
uh, Sheba. I mean, there, there's like a ton of characters that you're going to see in this book um, that are making it actually their first appearance. So, Africa Force is uh, it's more, it's more like the Avengers of Africa, if, if okay. you call it. But, you so, know, he's, been, he's been around for a minute now, in my, in my mind. Like I said, I brought him to creation, um, brought him back for the the fastest book. It was a short eight page story, kind of like to bring you up to speed on where they've been and what they're doing right now. All right, so with this character, what is the power set for him? Because he looks like he can wreck shop. All right, like right off the bat, he, he, he can. He can. New Nubian, uh, the race he comes from is an ancient immortal race called the Nubian. So he's immortal off the bat. He has immortality. Mm -hmm. He also has physical attributes, uh, strength and speed. Um, he's not as strong as, say, someone like um, Luke Cage, but he gives Spider Man a run for his money. Um, okay. So he's, he's in that type of strength realm. Um, he also has a slight, I won't say super speed, but he's faster than a normal human. Um, yeah, he's a he's a serious fighter. He's a serious fighter. There's another uh, character on Africa Force called called uh, Zulu, who basically okay. he's been around and he he's kind of like um, his mentor. And Shaka, for all intents and purposes, is probably the best fighter in the Avengers universe. So he his 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 uh, apprentice, and he has learned his his lessons uh, wisely, I should say. Mm -hmm. He's he's definitely a good fighter, um, and that'll be evident in upcoming issues. All right, so if there was a character inspiration, a character you can compare him to, who would that be? Ooh, um, a character I would compare him to in types of power would be he would be. Um, He would be like a a natural version of the original Deathstroke. Okay. Temper, temperament wise, I would say he would be he would be like Marvel's Blue Blue uh, Marvel. He's he's uh -huh. that, that type of temperament, but power wise, he would be like Deathstroke, original Deathstroke. Power wise, like Deathstroke, but temperament, right. like Blue like Marvel. Blue. Right. Blue Marvel's a beast. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. But he, but you know, he's laid back until you, you, you bring him to a point where he's like, okay, look, it's time to shut this down. But you know, mm -hmm. normally he's he's laid back. You know, he's secure in what he can do, so he doesn't have to be show have to prove it all the time. Basically, he mm -hmm. he's so secure in his powers and his his skill set that. He knows he's a badass, and you know he he does, but he doesn't flaunt. He doesn't flaunt. I'll put it that way. All right. So you, as a writer, talk to us about your writing process when coming up with your characters. You said you have a book of characters you've been created for a long time. Has that process has that process evolved since you first started? Have you picked oh, yeah. new things, or are you still using the old tricks? No, it, it's just evolved. Um, I, I do want, when I'm looking for interesting characters, I might thumb through the book, but um, like I said, I've been writing so many different types of characters and genres now. I, I'll flip from, today I'm writing um, a story for Black Starline number number six, which is a, a different type of book. Uh, each book in that series is, has a different theme, and that theme is uh, war. And mm -hmm. Just yesterday, I wrote a story for our horror book, uh, Chamber of Terror. So, and I flip back and forth. I'll write uh, action. I'll write mature themes. Stuff. So, every day it's something different. But um, with the super, the general superhero stuff, um, I try to take a common trope and just kind of flip it on its head a little bit, and do something a little different. Okay. Um, that's always that's always my intent. Um, like for instance. Um, uh, we had a book called uh, Pandemonium Eve Incarnate. Basically, it was an all-villain book, but I wanted to do something a little different with it, so I took and mixed biblical evil with it. 
And, you know, basically it's always something different. It's always going to give you a little bit of, of a twist or something extra too. Okay. So what is our character like, man? What does he eat? What does he do on his off time? What, what, what's what's your character's favorite movie? Let's get let's get deep with this character. <laughs> get deep. His favorite yeah. movie. Uh, we haven't thumbed that out, but uh, if I say he had a, a favorite movie, his favorite movie would probably be. Uh, favorite movie favorite. would probably be a Raisin in the Sun. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Why? Because I think he would connect emotionally and he would probably relate. Um, basically, when you when you see his his family dynamic, which start is going to start to come into play a little bit in Cosmos 5, the issues I have going on now with his brother Nimrod and their family dynamic is start to it's going to start to evolve and, and something later is going to promote their own series. Um, let the cat out the bag here on Short Fuse. Um, I'm going to have an Africa Force book. <laughs> um, but basically, I'm just kind of teasing a little bit each of the characters uh, that will appear in the book, kind of see, you know, how how people react to them. So far, Africa Force is well-received. Every time they've appeared, they've been well-received, and people keep asking, hey, when are you going to bring those characters back? When are you going to bring those characters back? Um, so we're, we're definitely going to bring them back in their own book. So you heard it here first. They are getting the book. It's okay. going to take some time. Um, but uh, no, the character, um, he is, he's not the he's not the king, so he doesn't have that responsibility. But Africa Force is pretty much like the soldiers or the, he's like the general where he has a lot of responsibility on his, on his shoulders and, but he's not his brother, Nimrod the King. And a lot of that dynamic between the two brothers is going to start to show up in the in their own book. Okay. You'll see, you'll see how it relates to Raising His Son short. Oh, okay, so it's not that he uh not that he just likes this movie for you know his own personal reasons, but you're drawing connections from a raising in yes. his son. Yes, yes. Okay, okay, and and I'm and now I'm, now I'm gonna pick because I, I don't I don't get a lot of people saying that I don't get a lot of writers specifically hey, pulling definitely, uh, definitely. for that. What what about that film is inspiring to you? It's inspiring to me personally because I've always loved black cinema. Um, we have so much diversity and we have so many different stories are there that people don't really, I will not say don't know about, but people don't really take the time to give them their flowers. Um, okay. So, so many good movies, Raising the Sun, you have uh, Native Son, another George, uh, another Baldwin uh, book. Um, there's just so, there's so much richness in our history and to try to bring some of that to, even though comic books aren't seen as the same type of, um, same type of uh, level as black cinema, um, try to bring something to make the character stand out or make them more appealing. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to do with some of these characters, make them real characters and give them like real stories and real, backstories so that people see him like like for instance titan a lot of people uh, like our character titan ultraman uh -huh. um they they said to me over and over again man titan is like a real brother if if he had like superman's powers and i'm like yeah that was the goal that's the goal that's what i'm looking to do is turn every character that we write into someone that you can relate to like early like the early 70s marvel's characters every every one of those characters you could kind of um understand where they were and see yourself as that character. So that's what I'm trying to do with each of the characters we write. All right, that makes sense. I'm really feeling that um, over the books I work on, um, we are we're very big in making characters that you yourself can relate to. 
Oh, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a comics fan first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And I think I have pretty much, I'm not going to say all of them, but I pretty much have all of these <laughs> books. I okay. have uh, like, like Daughter, like Father Like Daughter, I have uh, American <laughs> Dream, I have All of Your High. I'm okay. uh, still waiting for the next one to come out. Hint, hint. I know you're going to drop it soon. I know you're dropping it soon. Uh, yeah, um, I, um, I just did an update on that. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, all okay, of them finished. Um, I put up some mock covers, not final art, but some mock covers, and I'm working on the pencils now. <laughs> and and I, lo I love what y'all did with Vigilance. I love oh, the take of Vigilance. So that was that was nice. Um, but, I, I, love, I just love comics. I love the, the art form, form in general. I wish I could draw halfway as good as you, though, my brother, because uh, <laughs> seeing what you've been able to do, I appreciate that very much, sir. No problem. I like his form already. Hmm? I like the form already. <clears throat> well, Bless you. thank you. Uh, listen to your talk. I had um, been actually contemplating like having poses already done uh -huh. to dive into them, but I actually like the conversation portion okay. of it and cool. having yeah, I believe this is the first time I've ever had a chance to, to sit down and chop it up. Like I said I've been a fan of yours for a minute now and this is the first time we've ever had a chance to talk. Yeah. That conversation portion helps me kind of like dictate how get it to the, Exactly. Exactly. I get it. I get it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, no problem, no problem. So, so what is somebody, uh, go ahead. So you're saying like fighting wise, you do he's got hands. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's he's a um, he's taught by one of the the oldest Zulu warriors. Uh like I said, it's an immortal race. So basically Zulu was He's kind of like an amalgam of Shaka Zulu and say maybe a Wolverine, and that and that kind of when I designed him, he's an immortal character. He has the fighting abilities of like a Shaka Zulu, where he was just like the fiercest warrior on the continent. And but he imagine if Shaka Zulu survived after centuries and centuries. This is the character Zulu. That mm -hmm. character taught tribesmen how to fight. So basically, he's 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 the he's the one he's the one. All right. Well, uh, which one of these poses <clears throat> are you feeling the most? That's A. I love all of them. That's okay. B. Which one? Let's let's do a B. Let's do B. I like I like B. B we coming at you. Okay. Yeah. Let's do B. All right. So now we're gonna dig in here. Let me get that a little bit lighter. How long you been drawing, Mike? If you don't mind me asking you a question. Oh no! <laughs> hey, it's chat and draw. It's a back and forth. Um, okay, cool. I've been drawing since the third grade. I'm uh, 38 okay. years old. Uh, um, <clears throat> and uh, I started drawing when I um, watched a cartoon called Voltron. Oh, that was that was the move. <laughs> line. Well, which Voltron? I'm a line force guy. Which Voltron you prefer? Um, the original one. Uh, yeah, the, the, with the lines. With the yeah, lines, with right. the lines. If you if you watch it now, yeah. it's really crappy. Uh, but I am a big fan I haven't of seen the new. The new one. I haven't seen the new. The new one is amazing. The new one is okay. literally the best, most appreciated, most authentic, <laughs> respectable remake of a cartoon series we've seen. Ooh, okay, that, them big words. Somebody check this out then. Somebody check this out. Oh yeah, they play. They do nothing but pay. They pay so much respect to the source material, but still make it their own. Now, okay, I wasn't all the way happy with the ending, with how they okay. how they solved the problem. Um, so the ending, I give like a B minus to the series because it's okay. eight seasons. But overall, it's a B plus it show. Good. It was good. Definitely they, recommend. 
the ending brings it down because it, it, it seemed rushed, but everything else about the show is perfect. While we in quarantine and lockdown in some places, that might be something for me to watch. Yeah, oh, no, for sure. And I'll go fast. Most of the seasons are, are short. Okay. All right. Back to you. Okay. What, what made you, what got you in the comic books, man? How did that all start for you? How, how did you get to the point where you said, I want to do this? I want to make characters and tell stories. Well, I've wanted to do that ever since I was like six years old. Um, I don't want to bore, bore your watches too much, but uh, as a, oh, as no, a that's young, what here for. As a young man, I, I used to love comic books. I had an older brother and my cousin. They were like road dogs, Batman and Robin. I, I wanted to be like them and hang with them and you know, do what they did. But of course, you know, you don't bring your little brother nowhere, or you know, you're too young to go out with the, with the big boys. So mm -hmm. they would sit and read comic books too. So I always wanted to read the comic books with them. And they were like, nah, nah, you can't read comic books, you'll mess up our comic books. So when we would go outside and play, I would read the comic books. And I, I fell in love with comic books. This was the first time I saw work by Kirby and Ditko and they had comics, Neil Adams. I mean, it was like amazing. I was like, oh, wow. So I would always want to go to my cousin's house with my brother so I could go in his room and read his comic books. As okay. they got a little older, <laughs> they got into girls, so the comic books weren't a big thing no more. So my cousin was like, hey, you've always liked my comic books. Do you want them? I was like, yeah. So he gave me his comic books, and that, that was it. And it, it got me to the point. even got me. <laughs> I got a beating. And I'll never forget this beating. I got a beating when I was in first grade because I like comic books so much. My mom had bought me some school supplies that were <laughs> supposed to last me the whole year. So uh -huh. I call myself making my own comic book. I went through four packs of paper making a comic book. And I, mind you, I can't really draw, but you know, I put all my favorite Spider-Man and Superman and Wonder Woman, they fighting Godzilla. I mean, I made a comic book with all <laughs> the school paper. It was supposed to last me for a whole school year. So moms needed to say wasn't too pleased with that. And uh, I felt the wrath. So she bought me some new school paper. I was like, don't you mess up this paper. And, you know, it's for school. I only mm. used two packs this next time. I made the <laughs> <a> comic book. <laughs> and I didn't get another beating, but you know, I always wanted to, I honestly I always wanted to do it. Um, of course, life takes you in different directions. Um, it wasn't until uh, 2009, my wife and I had went to celebrate our anniversary and we were out in San Diego. And um, we also were going to Comic Con. Tyrese, what? the singer actor, was in our hotel. So my wife and I got to meet him. And he was, we were like, you know, talk to him. He was like, hey, you know, why are you here? San Diego. He was like, well, I'm here to uh, promote my comic book. He had a comic book through Images of Time called Mayhem. And so he was like, yeah, well, you guys come and check me out. And I was like, okay. I'm like, yeah, you should be singing or making a movie. What you doing? He said, man, comic books is. Is the move? He's like, come, come on by, by my booth. He's like, I'm, a, I'm a such and such. So he went past Comic Con, met him, and everything. And I started to walk around. I talked to, there's only like three other brothers in there. Uh, a young brother, I can't remember his name. Um, and then I met the creator of Lion Man, and the creator of uh, Stormbringers. Uh huh. So I, told, I talked to both of them. And, you know, I was like, well, I've always wanted to do comics. You know, I even wrote a story that I submitted to Marvel. And they were like, you should do it. But, you know, they were, they were giving me, like, ins and outs. And then so I was getting ready to go home. And they was like, well, you coming back tomorrow for uh, the Black Panther? I was like, what's the Black Panther? And they were like, bro, if you don't do anything else, you need to go to the Black Panther. I went to the Black Panther. And that was a um, basically a panel put on by... Michael Davis, who was part of Milestone. And okay. when I tell you at the end of that, I was like, I'm ready to do this. I'm going to take the leap. Okay. And so I, I did it. And I, I had the balls to walk up to, at the time, it was um, Dennis Cowan and uh, another guy who I didn't know at the time sitting there talking. I wanted to tell Mr. Cowan how much I respected him. You know, I followed his comics for years. You know, he was like a like an idol of mine, and I told him, I said, yeah, hey, you know, based, based on what I saw here, I always wanted to do comics, and I said, you know, I want to make my own comics, and he was like, encouraging, and he was like, yeah, go ahead and do it, you know, go ahead and make that move, and so I, I told him the idea of what 
with soon to be Titan. And the guy who was talking to him was like, hey, I'd love to be a part of that. And it turned out that guy was Ken Lasky. So he did the very first concept drawings of Titan. Okay. Of course, Marvel and other things got in the way, but uh, that was it. Once I got home, that was it. And I haven't looked back since. So You was bit by the bug, huh? Yeah, I was bit, bro. I was bit. <laughs> ten, ten years and counting, we, we holding it down. So hopefully be blessed to do another 10 and keep it going. But nobody told me how rough it is. I mean, you got to really want this and you won't, it won't make it, the dreams you have as a kid of doing this. It's different. It's different, it's different yeah. but you know, it's, it's, it's a love. You got to have the love for it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I've had my trials and tribulations. I've had my successes and I've and just mm-hmm. the successes. I've had failures. So, uh, indeed, indeed. but you know what we learn from this. That's how we learn. And that's how we get better. You got to fail. If you ever truly want to succeed, you got to fail because mm-hmm. without failure, there's no success because you don't know how to get it right. You don't know how to get it right. You're right about that. And so that's what I'm trying to do, man. Trying to, trying to get it right. Um, I've, I've been with some, uh, <laughs> I've been with some, Publishers that weren't so great, and I'm, I'm with the publisher is pretty damn great. <laughs> so yeah. you guys got a good, you guys got a good setup over there. Yeah, so it, it it is a learning experience, and you know you'll meet a lot of people out here. You'll uh you'll work with people. Uh, some bridges will get burnt, some bridges will get burnt, and some bridges will get reassembled. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Some that's true. Will be- I I've had my share of all of the above. I've I've made mistakes that I wish I hadn't made. And some some things weren't mistakes. They were blessings in the, in the long run. But, you know, it's like I said, it's all a learning experience. I've learned what to do, what not to do. Um, like I said, mm-hmm. for every every good thing I've done, I've, I made some mistakes. I'll be the first to admit it. Hey, I, I messed that up. But, you know, <laughs> as long as you learn from it, you don't continue to do the same things, especially be malicious with it. You know, things will, things will turn out turn out well. Things will turn out well. Oh, that's looking real nice. Thank you, sir. So, um, I have characters that inspire me and put my character down um, together. I know you said uh, Deathstroke and um, Blue Marvel. Uh, my flagship character, Hotshot, who I'm representing today. Um, it is. It is. Uh, big inspiration for him being um, Naruto, Wolverine, Invincible. Um, yeah, Spider-Man. I can see that. Um, I can definitely see Spider-Man, Invincible. Those two stood out to me. Definitely stood out. So, and I bring that up to say, I'm 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 very much so impressed with the writing um, of you know there there have been some really good writing talent on those characters. Uh, Robert Kirkman being one of my favorite yep. writers. Uh, out of the main probably series. probably one of the best, if not the best, series of the past two decades. Invincible was the bomb, the bomb, phenomenal. Yep. So I kind of model my writing after Robert Kirkman's style. I really love how Kirkman writes. He has a very good uh, way of putting your main story in the foreground and then having two or three sub stories. That eventually moved to the forefront. Like, where did that come from? But then, if you look in the book, you're like, "Oh, this has been here this whole time." So, is there anyone that has inspired you, or that you model your writing after? Oh, several. Steve okay. Engel, Steve Englehart, big time. Um, who else could I name to say um, actually had an effect on my writing? Marv Wolfman. Um, yep. Love what he did with the Titans. Um, so the Titans, um, Stephen Hart when he was on the Avengers. Now that's that's seventy stuff. Um, I love that. Um, bringing it more current. Um, I like what Kate's is doing with uh, the cosmic the stuff at Marvel. Um, mm-hmm. I like cosmic stuff. Um, so he's he's getting something fresh out of what they're doing over at Marvel. Um, who else, uh, current writer, would I say I admire, whose style I admire? Um, I would, I would give, uh, 
I'm I like Injustice. I like uh, Taylor, uh, Tom, Tom Taylor. Like what he's doing. Okay. Those those four. I would say those four. But I'm a I'm a huge Englehart fan. I just love Englehart. Love Englehart. Oh, Kirk Busiek, uh His Avengers series, probably like top three, top three uh, writers of all time. Yeah, those, those four. I'd say those four. Okay, all right. So what what kind of artist do you like? Ooh, I love, I've been told I have a style of artist I prefer, but I, I love crisp art, nice, fresh, clean lines. Um, I love the Jim Lee's of the world, but I also... Got a thing for the Tar McFarlands. I mean, <laughs> so you know, if I can have the the freshness of like a uh, of a Travis caress, but also I like Steve Platt, where it's like a thousand and one details all light laid in his work. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I like I like a lot of different art, but art to me draws me into the book and then from there the story is what keeps me on the book. Okay. So I try to make I try to make sure that um for each title that we have, I have a vision of what I want the art to look like. And from there, once I find the artist, I try, I try to kind of write around what their art brings to the table. Um mm -hmm. Like the story that we uh, that I did for Greg LaRoque, he signed up for this book that we have called The Regulators. I tried to write something big like he was used to um, with, with Flash. Um, so we finally have that, finally have issue two and three completed. So that'll be coming at the end of the year, finally. Mm -hmm. uh, and so hopefully people are willing. But yeah, I, I try to write to the art. Okay. So I, I'm sorry. I, I'm terrible with names. If anybody has watched any of my shows, they know I'm sucking mm -hmm. keeping track of names or whatever. But it sounded like you just said you had an artist from one of the Flash comic books. Oh yeah, Greg LaRoque. He did um he did Flash. He was on Avengers. Uh, he did Legion of Superheroes. Um, he signed up for pretty much my first team book. Basically, it's like our version of the Justice League meets the Avengers, called The Regulators. So okay. we took all of them, um, I don't say all of the big guns, but we took Titan, Mystic, uh, Charity, All-American, took most of our popular characters, like 10 characters, and we put them in a team book. Now, they don't always get along, because, like, for instance, like two of the characters, uh, Hannibal and Spartan, they're both immortal, but they both have a grudge against the other, where they've been trying to kill each other for centuries. So they're both mm -hmm. on the team. Yeah, they're both on a team. So Do we know what the grudge is, or is that spoiler? Oh, oh no, no. It's, and it's based off history. It's based off Hannibal is basically uh, the Hannibal of history, and uh, Spartan is one of the kings of Sparta, where the two actually had a battle between Spartans and Hannibal's forces. Okay. And Spartans came on the losing end of the battle. So that is the, pre the precipice of why Spartan has been trying to kill kill Hannibal all these years. So it's it, and it go it gets golden it goes into it in the story, and it's part of the subplot that's going to leak over into like the the second uh, arc of the book, which we're working on now. Unfortunately, right. Greg's no longer no longer on the title as of issue four, but we found a new young artist who's he's going to blow he's going to blow people away. He's amazing. It's amazing. So what's what's your process for vetting artists, man? How do you how do you go through that process of picking them for the book? Um it it depends on the book of what I'm trying to come across, uh the feel for like uh the 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 war book I'm working on now. I, I wanted an artist who had like a gr like a gritty kind of uh war is hell. I wanted to get across the fact that war is a he is basically hell. Mm -hmm. So the artists had to have like a, a not a dark style, but something that that hit when you when you see the art, you kind of okay like different artists. You know this because you you're an artist. Mm -hmm. um, 
certain art when you see it, it can it can be lively or light. Uh, um, like certain artists will make you think of roses and romance, but then there's certain artists that make you think of something dark or something mysterious. Um, yeah. like for some of the supernatural books, I have an artist named Danny Jimenez who's working on a story for me. And it's a dark kind of. Uh, he's working on a story basically. Um, well, the name that we had we had a book back in character we created called Lazarus. It's it's the the biblical Lazarus, but he's a a homicide detective, and he has come back to solve murders that have a supernatural tint to it. And this was before Image came out with their uh, their book, uh, Lazarus. Yeah. So we have this character, and Danny is doing a story based on that, and it's it's a dark, dark uh, murder type mystery book. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. It's a murder mystery. Um, okay. So. Like I said, I look at the different styles of the artists, and from there, it allows me to determine which kind of a book they are best to draw. So we, right. we do have some we have some amazing artists on on our books, and it gets me in trouble for saying this, and a lot of them blush. I call them the untouchables because I'm like, man, these dudes are bad. And so everybody's what? like, you call your artists the untouchables? I'm like, yeah, yeah, because they 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 get smoking, they smoking. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. I'm, I'm, I can definitely feel you. I'm very proud of my production teams on the books that we work on. They uh, put a lot of time, blood, sweat, and tears into it. Um, and you know, when when you have people that are that dedicated and put out quality work, you you're proud of them. It, yeah, yeah, and that's what it is. And you know, I know we're not supposed to be proud, but I am. Of all the people that we work with, um, I, I can't thank them enough because honestly, without the artists. And when I say artists, I'm talking about the pencils, the inkers, the the colorists, the letterers, the editors, especially the editors. If we didn't have all these people, Evan or any other comic book company would, would not be anything worthwhile because there's so much pe so much behind the scenes that go on that people just take for granted. There's a lot that goes into a comic book. It's not just the writing, it's not just the art. There's like a thousand and one other details that go into it. And they all make up the book, so no one part should be slight. So I thank right. all of the creators in my books. I, I like the way that definition is coming. I want to, yeah, I want to get the muscles popping. It's looking good. I feel like uh, when when homeboy gets serious, it gets serious. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. And I meant to I meant to share with you some other pictures. I didn't have. Uh, I I sorry. I got home from work kind of late today, so uh, oh, right, I got home scrambling. So, but yeah, I'm definitely gonna send you guys some other pictures so we can see uh, what he does. I'm just glad we we got to connect. That's all that matters. Me too. Me too. Like I said, I've been a fan for a while, so I'm, I'm actually honored to be on your show and be talking to you. All right, man. I appreciate that. Nothing but respect. No problem. No problem. It's nice. Look at that sky. You can already see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, wanna, I don't know, man. I feel like he is. Uh, yeah, like that's it. That's it. That's it. As a matter of fact, I wish I had... Uh, my computer with me. My computer was acting up. That's the reason I'm not on a computer at the moment. Uh, where I keep all my my files, it was acting up, so I didn't have time to get it corrected. But I wanted to send you some some other stuff of the character, uh, some of the new stuff that we're working on, so you can see. But you captured it already. I mean, I'm looking at the face, and I'm like, oh man, he already got it just from the description. He got it. I just feel like like when it gets down to it, and like. He's like, oh, yeah. like I feel like once his character gets pissed, he's pissed. Like, yep. it took a yep. lot to get him to this level, and you shouldn't have done. Yep, it. that's it. That's it. You got it. And that face says it all right there. That's cool. I like that. I like it. And that's that's kind of the um, the cool thing that I'm discovering about this is, you know, while you're the writer, you're the creative character, and like, it's not a comic page, but you are 
helping breathe life into this character into me now while I'm drawing it for you. Indeed, indeed. And, and, that, and that's the thing, it's, it's a synergy. It takes more than just the writer to make it. The artist is the one who actually puts those concepts on the page to show people, okay, this is what is trying to be conveyed. So it, it, you can't have one or the other. Everybody always asks the question, more important, the writing or the, or the art? It's a synergy. They both work together to create what you see. So, hey, trust. You can't have a good comic without art. So don't let anybody say otherwise. Your art is amazing, brother. I like that. Ah, thank you, man. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. That's cool. I definitely want it to, you know, I definitely want it to look good for you. Yeah, it's, it's looking good. It's looking good. Oh, okay. So with, with your curious, what, what brought you to make Vigilance? What, what, uh, what was the, the, the concept, not the concept, but what was the, what was the thought process that went through your mind and said, hey, I need a female character, or did you have something even bigger in mind when, when you came up with that idea? What, what was it? Well, when we uh, started making these books, and um, I was that kid that I don't I don't know if it was a direct reflection of it, um, but I was that kid that whenever I played video games, you got to create a character. Like I got tired of creating a guy, and gotcha. I, and looking back at it now, I think it's because I saw men in leading roles all the time. It just was boring. Right, um, and right. then the few times I got to see a woman in a leading role you know, Wonder Woman, Xena, Warrior Princess, and stuff like that. I'm like, that's pretty damn cool. So when I would make a character, I would make a female character. Cool. And um, I just, like, with our comic books at FSK, Short Fuse Media, I'm just like, I draw what's in my, in my world. Like, I'm surrounded by men and women, and I feel like anybody should be epic. But I saw that in comic books, we have some pretty amazing female characters, and uh, Ooh. Ooh. Um, they don't get enough limelight. Like Storm, yep. Storm should have her own book. She should have her own comic book. Yes, and, and it, it should, should be in the hundreds by now. It should be she over should have have it by now. Yes, yes. Like, why, why not? Um, yes, agreed. But I thought that she didn't have like a, a female character that was in her own comic book dominating without a man's help. And that's what I wanted. And like, that's what I wanted Vigilance to be. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So, um, came up with her. We didn't, and then we didn't want to, um, over sexualize her. Mm -hmm. Want to just give, like, I just didn't want her to, um, I wanted her to be the strongest character in my world. Didn't have to depend on any man to come help and save her. The people looked up to her and respected her, like as a hero, not a female yeah. hero, but as a hero. a hero. There you go. There you go. I like that. I like that. So, what's uh? And I've, I've asked this, so it's 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 going to be a tradition, though. What's the elevator pitch for this character? For the for character the himself, or for the group he's going to be in either or okay, okay. Uh, well for the for the group i'll do both i'll do both for the group he's going to be in africa force it's africa's version of the avengers and the protectors of the nubian kingdom kush they are needed at this point um when you follow the story in cosmos you'll see why uh for the character the character is going to have to take on, Trisman is the character, he's going to have to take on some much needed responsibility. He's going to have to grow as a character and into his legacy and his lineage. And I'll leave it that um, you'll learn more about the legacy and the lineage in the book Africa Force is coming out. So. Okay. Where is everybody going to be able to get the book when it drops? Oh, um, that particular book you get it all of the places Advent Comics are sold. Um, you can get it through the stores. You can get it through our uh, website, adventcomics.com. Um, Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble. Uh, plan to put it on Comixology. Um, we're now on Comixology Unlimited, too. Um, uh, Kindle, Indie Planet, Drive-Thru, Gumroads. Uh, pretty much anywhere 
our comics are so you're gonna be able to get that book. Okay. Like I said, it's gonna it's gonna be I'm I'm Cosmos is a twelve issue maxi series and they're gonna be four titles actually that's gonna spin off of that. Well, in my mind it's gonna be four. Mm-hmm. One is a new one that it's kind of getting rave reviews already from the people who have reviewed it, but the reviews are Reviews are nice, but it's the fans who actually determine whether these books get made or stay as an ongoing series. So okay. once the fans give me the blessing or say, nah, it's a hard pass for me, dog, I, you know, it's not selling, that determines whether I'll bring it. But uh, Africa Force is the next book that's going to spin off of Cosmos. And so around about Cosmos uh, 7 or 8, is when you should see the Africa Force book. Um, but right now, Africa Force can be found inside the Cosmos Maxi series. And Cosmos 5 is on Kickstarter as we speak. And it's halfway funded. So if anybody likes good stories uh, with a twist, Cosmos has a twist. Um, not only is it a series that brings all of our characters together, it's also a series that brings over 75 publishers and creators together, indie publishers and creators together in our book. So it's it's a big crossover. Big crossover. So go ahead and put the link in our comments, man. Oh, Oh, okay. Do you guys think there will ever be a time when indie comics take over mainstream? (sighs) It's a perfect time right now. I'm telling you, um, (laughs) everything that's going on, it's a perfect time for indie comics to shine. Because unfortunately, the industry as a whole is on shutdown because of this coronavirus thing. But you have um, you have people who have great content. There's some great, great indie comic books out there. And the problem is most people don't know where to find them or haven't been made aware of them. Um, and most shops now are you know they're looking for new content because they want their readers to keep reading comics so uh-huh. they're looking to indies to say hey you know fill the void for for a while since marvel and dc are down so now it's time for some of these creators to step up and put their stuff out there and it's like i said there's so much good indie stuff out there that i think um a lot of these guys you'll be hearing from and seeing a lot more of their work if you give them a chance i think uh i agree with you this is a good opportunity for people to kind of get a boost get a jump in uh, but mm-hmm. distribution has to be a problem that indies that off. That is the problem. That is the problem. Um, I don't know. I cannot speak for all indies on how their distribution lines are set up or how they get their content out to people. But that is the key. <clears throat> and that's uh, something that I've been talking with a few shots behind the scenes uh, over the past few days. That's a big thing. A lot of comic shops will want to take a chance on indies, but if they uh, can't get the books to them or get them quantities that they need needed, they may not take the chance. They may not take the chance on them. And, you know, that's, that's sad. But no, they like I say, the opportunity is there. The opportunity is there for comic artists to shine and for indies to, indies to shine. We just have to make uh, the most of it. Uh, got, like we said, going to handle that distribution problem, but then also, uh, you got to come out with more than you know one book a year. And I'm I've been guilty of that myself. Uh, I'm sitting That's here true. with 20 comics uh, through FSK uh, printed and out uh, through FSK and Short Fuse Media, with a potential eight to drop again this year. But you know, life happens, stuff happens. You know, they stop progress, mm-hmm. things like that. Um, so those are two of the biggest problems, and we're we're not indies. And um, that indies, per se, for the, the, the sake of this discussion, won't be able to overtake mainstream or, or compete with mainstream um, unless we handle those issues. Now, there are some there are some people out here um, that are out here selling mad books and having success. Uh, but those are, you know, every far and few in between. That's true. It, it takes it takes. A, I'm, I'm going to say this in. I hope the spirit in which I said that the people are watching will understand it. Comics takes deep, deep pockets off the break. It's it's an expensive business 
And if you want to attain the success of a, not even a, the top two, if you want to attain a success of an image, a boom, scout, yeah. TKO, or whoever, whoever the case may be, you have to be willing to put a ton of money into your books. Not only just as far as the, the, the art and the talent, but you have to market those books. You have to distribute those books. There's so many moving pieces to this thing that it could, it could, uh, it could take a person and make them not want to do comics anymore. But by the same token, if you know coming in what you have to face, you have to face the big two. They have a ton of money behind them as far as marketing and things of that nature. Everybody knows them. And if you try to, if you can navigate with using your strengths and using what you have available to you, um, everybody's not going to be a Marvel. Everybody's not going to be DC. Everybody's not going to be an image or a boom or whoever the case may be. But if you work for your your strengths, you can you can still sell and be successful. Yeah. Um, like I said, we've been doing this for ten years. Right now, we're sold on forty six in forty six countries, six continents. We okay. we don't have the big push, and we don't have the the solid the solid backing of a diamond or any any other big publisher but yet we still manage to do that so it can be done but it takes a lot a lot a lot of work it takes dedication and it's going to take you willing to sacrifice a lot to make it happen mm. so but it, it can be done and by no means um is that a success because to be honest there are levels that I, I still want to attain. And like I said, I just got to keep pushing. Everybody has to keep pushing. And for aspiring creators, never give up. Never give up. Because this thing is hard, but it has its rewards. And success to one person is not success to another person. So it just depends on what you're looking to get out of comics or what your version of success is. That should be your goal. Don't worry about what another person says is success. Success is what you make it. I feel that, man. I was watching a movie last night called Uncorked. It's on Netflix. It's freaking amazing. Okay. It's Uncorked. Freaking amazing. Who's in it? Uh, I, I'm terrible with names, man. <laughs> okay. Okay, no problem. About a young man who is, you know, in the family business, which is his pop owns a very successful um, barbecue spot. Um, uh -huh. generation after generation has managed this spot. Pops wants to pass it on to his son. His son knows how to run the business, but it's not his thing. He wants to be um, a master wine um, wine okay. artist, where, where they taste wine, they know wine, they, they okay. tell people. So he, he, he wants to own a yeah a, a wine winery. Mm -hmm. And okay. then hold on. Um, but then he chases after his you know he chases after it. And I don't want to give any um, spoilers, but okay. it, it's just a good story. It, it feels like a very genuine story. All the portrayals, all the acting is very genuine and real. Like it's a very believable situation. It's a very believable family. Like a good a good dad who you know is stuck in his ways. Very loving. Like it's great, man. Okay, uncorked. I'm gonna look for that. We ain't doing anything tonight. Definitely on lockdown mode. I don't know yeah. how it is in your state, but uh, we're on lockdown. <laughs> so no essential movements, no going outside. So that definitely Netflix is going to be a uh, run up, run up. <laughs> yeah, we got a, a few more minutes on here. Okay. I'm almost done with this. Looking good, looking good. You know that texture on that hair is gonna take me a second. <laughs> Good. Thank you, thank you. What's the uh uh kind of obvious question, but you know, I don't want to just assume. What's the inspiration for the for my man's care costume here? Well, it was a mix of three different heroes costumes who I grew up reading. Um the mix was 3D man. Um, there was a character who came about years later in the uh, 
the Avengers, who was basically a black version of 3D Man, and then a DC Comics character, uh, Tyrock from the Legion of Superheroes. I've always been a fan of him. So I, okay. I merged the three characters together. Um, some of the elements, like the, the little uh, peace sign on his on his belt, other little things. Like I said, it's it was a merging of those three different characters into this one character, as mm -hmm. far as the, the actual look. His character wise, he's gonna be. Um, if anyone who has seen the first, well, seen Cosmos two, that's where he's introduced. He doesn't really have a speaking role. His first speaking role is was in our anniversary book a couple months ago, and then you'll see him in Cosmos five. So then you'll see, you know, start to get a feel for his character and see what type of character this guy is. All right, man. Well, I, I hope I captured him here. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it. Looking good. Looking real good. Yeah, I think, uh, I think you can call it a wrap right there, man. There it is. There it is. You got it. It's a pretty fun dude to draw. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Definitely got to do it again then. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Richard. Keeman, what's up? What's up? Um, I just posted the uh, Kickstarter uh, that Keeman was, uh, oh, cool. that Tony was talking about. I just posted in our group. Um, so if you can go over there, give it a pledge. Uh, I understand money's tight. Uh, everybody doesn't have a lot of money. I understand that. But even if you can't yeah. pledge to it, give it a share. A share is just and what, what I'm going to do if if this thing is uh, a success, everybody who pledged because of the virus thing, they're going to end up with all there's certain exclusives in the book or mm -hmm. in the Kickstarter campaign. Everybody's going to get one of those as well. So basically, you're going if if we reach funding, everybody's going home with four comics instead of one. So okay. you've heard it here first. You heard um, it here first. Like it, everybody's going to get it. Now that, that'll be. Like I said, I, I I can't do much in the way of the big boys as far as this uh, COVID-19 thing, but I can give you some free comics on my end to kind of say I appreciate you for taking the time out to even look at the Kickstarter, for even backing it, and just to say, hey, we appreciate you as the comic readers and let you know that we're all part of this industry and we're going to get through it. So free comics, if I can do that, that's nothing. So. Like I said, if we if we're successful, everybody's going home with all the comics. And that's going to be an update I post later as well to the to the uh, the page, the Kickstarter page. Exclusive announcement made here first on Chat and Draw episode indeed, two. Indeed. We're we're talking making history. history. All right, well, everybody, I hope you like the character. This is I feel like this is another fun situation, Tony. I really enjoy talking to you, man. Uh, you want to uh, Mike? Want to let everybody know where they can find you? Where can they follow you at on social media and stuff? Um, we're on uh, Facebook, Advent Comics. Um, if you want to hit me directly, you can follow me on my personal Facebook page as well, Tony Cottrell. I'm on Twitter as Advent Comics. We're on Instagram as Advent Comics. Um, that's pretty much the only social media that, that I'm I'm doing is those three platforms. But yeah, you can find us anywhere, um, and our books are everywhere. Um, like I said, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Uh, we're in comic book shops. Uh, you name it, we're there. Look for us. Ask your store about us when they open back up. Um, like I said, keep supporting us, and we'll keep supporting you and trying to bring out good talent. And please support the industry as a whole, because right now everybody's hurting across the board, and we just want to keep them and you know make sure that everybody who we going through this together with reaches the finish line. And when we come out of this thing, we're all still standing. All right, all right, everybody. Well, I'm Mike Watson, and this has been another episode of chat and draw you can follow me right here there's fs uh short fuse media at twitter and follow our website you know for new comic books merch and all that stuff shortfusemediagroup.com but you can always follow me as art of mike watson and freestyle comics on instagram twitter and facebook and 
Thank you for tuning in. Tomorrow we'll have another guest on the show, and we're going to do it again at the same time, 315. Tony, thank you very much. I will, uh, you, I will email this over to you. Uh, it's yours to do what you want. Cool. I'll be blasting it. Don't worry about it. And I'm tuning in tomorrow's show as well. Thank you for putting on a good show, and thank you for doing what you do, brother. It's, it's greatly appreciated in these times. Appreciate it. No you. problem, man. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. All right, Stay happy. Be safe, everybody.